In this video, we will talk about the Fracture Toughness module or KC module available on the Struerts Duramin 40 hardness tester, which we are using for this tutorial, but also present on other models like the Duramin 100 or the Duramin 650. Before we start looking at the software, let's go through a few important aspects of this testing methodology. Now, fracture toughness is usually a quite difficult property to measure in a material. That's because complex formulas are involved, many parameters must be taken into account, uh, special test rigs are required, and also the specimen needs to have a very specific and very accurate geometry. However, for some particular types of hard and brittle materials like uh, ceramics, Fracture toughness can be estimated by making a simple Vickers indentation and by measuring the cracks that develop from the four corners of the indentation. This technique is usually called indentation fracture toughness or IFT. There are basically three requirements that should be fulfilled if we want to use the Duramin uh, fracture toughness module. The first one is that the indentation has to be clearly visible. Sometimes uh, the polished surface of ceramic materials is not reflective enough and the edges of the indentation are not very clear because uh, there is not enough contrast. So in that case, it's not possible to use the KC module. The second requirement is uh, that the material has to be brittle so that during the indentation, cracks will develop from the four edges of the indentation. Again, cracks have to be clearly visible and clearly measurable. And the third one is that we need to know the Young's modulus of, uh, modulus of elasticity of our material. So now that we know all the requirements, let's see how the fracture toughness module actually works. Um, I will be using a tungsten carbide polished sample, which I am now positioning under the objective. I make sure that the focus is correct and then I click on the blinking button in focus. Now I select KC module, I choose a load, 30 kilos in this case, and then I click on the start button. Now a Vickers indentation is being created. I can clearly see the cracks developing from the four corners and I can clearly see the crack tips. So this is how the ideal indentation should look like. Uh, once the indentation is measured, I will accept the result. Now I can see that these four new markers have appeared. I need to position each of these yellow lines at the tip of each crack. So I just drag this line at the end of the crack and I can use the magnified image on the top left corner to help me position the marker more accurately. Once I'm done, I click on save. Here I will write the Young's modulus of the material in megapascal and I know that for this material the value is about 530 gigapascal. The last thing I need to do is checking this box if the fracture in my material follows the Palmquist model, otherwise I can uncheck it if it follows the median crack model. So now I am done, I click on OK, and up here is my result expressed in megapascal per square root meter. <laughs> 